masters of the skies. Vultures are a product of millions of years of evolution. Today, critically endangered. The vulture is fighting a losing battle for its survival. Vultures are the greatest, most efficient scavengers on the planet. They are a crucial link in the food chain, keeping natural habitats free of dead, decaying carcasses. They play a vital ecological role as decomposers, along with bacteria and the fly. A vital link between death and life. A colony of vultures can reduce a large animal the size of an ox to bone in less than half an hour. In the 1980s, India had the highest density of vultures in the world. Thousands of vultures could be seen gliding majestically across our skies. The reason behind the high density of vultures is the high livestock population in India. India has the highest concentration of cattle in the world. And being a primarily non-beef eating country, dead cattle are dumped in carcass grounds. Here, hide collectors remove the skins. These carcass dumping grounds are the major foraging sites for the vultures. They flock here in hundreds and thousands to clear the remains. The vulture population help to dispose of the carcasses and keep in check disease and contamination. This interdependence formed a strong link in the food chain. Nine species of vultures are found in India. The bearded vulture, the Egyptian vulture, the slender billed vulture, the cinereous vulture, the red headed or king vulture, the Eurasian griffin vulture, the long billed vulture, the Himalayan griffin vulture, and the oriental white backed vulture. The vulture is a resilient long living species but a slow breeder. The bird produces only one offspring each year, so the population grows slowly. Today, barely a few thousand of these majestic birds survive. In just over a decade, over 99% of vultures in the Indian subcontinent have disappeared. The population has crashed to levels so low that it may never fully recover. The world's most efficient scavenger is today sliding into extinction. This has created a serious ecological imbalance. The effects are visible all around. Rotten carrion lies unattended for days in towns and villages. The stench of the deteriorating carcasses is an ominous reminder to mankind of the loss of a critical link of the food chain right before our eyes. Left unattended, putrefying carcasses could give rise to many lethal and unknown viruses and epidemics. 
in the absence of scavenging vultures, the population of dogs, rats and crows are exploding. These dogs have been observed to become aggressive and ferocious. After feeding, they often come into villages, increasing the risk of rabies and other contamination. Experts first noticed a sudden and dramatic rise in vulture deaths in the early 90s. The Bombay Natural History Society set off an alarm. Worldwide ornithologists and scientists began investigations to probe the sudden and mysterious deaths. It took almost a decade to uncover the real culprit. The Peregrine Fund, working with scientists in Pakistan, exposed the silent killer, an ordinary veterinary drug, diclofenac. Diclofenac is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug for both humans and animals and is primarily administered to the cattle for its effectiveness in relieving pain, inflammation and fever. Because of its low price and easy availability, it soon took over the veterinary drugs market, especially in the rural sector. Every year, millions of livestock are treated with diclofenac. The estimated market of diclofenac in India is 200 million rupees. In India, it is manufactured by 110 pharmaceutical companies. 25 companies manufacture 45 formulations of diclofenac exclusively for the veterinary sector. But unknown to anyone at the time, this drug was silently killing our vultures. If an animal dies during or just after treatment by diclofenac injection and a vulture scavenges on the carcass, the diclofenac enters the bird's system. The bird's body is unable to process the chemical and excrete uric acid from the body. So uric acid crystals accumulate in the visceral organs. This causes visceral gout, leading to dehydration, kidney failure, and eventually the death of the vulture. Scientific studies show that even if less than 1% of the carcasses have diclofenac, it would be enough to result in the present catastrophic rate of decline in the vulture population. The situation is grim. Almost 10% of carcasses sampled have traces of diclofenac. The disappearance of the Asian vultures is the fastest decline experienced by any wild bird species in the world. Even faster than the decline of the dodo, which finally went extinct. Three vulture species have been most seriously affected by diclofenac poisoning. The oriental white-backed vulture, the long-billed vulture, and the already rare slender-billed vulture. More than 99% of all the vultures in India, Nepal and Pakistan are dead. Alarmed by this decline, in the year 2000, the World Conservation Union, the IUCN, included the three vulture species to critically endangered status, the highest degree of extinction risk. In 2002, all three species were brought under the Schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act, bringing the vulture at par with the tiger and the rhino. The government of India was quick to respond. On 17th March 2005, a directive was issued by the Prime Minister to phase out veterinary diclofenac in six months. There is an urgent need for the implementation of the Prime Minister's directive. All existing stocks of diclofenac need to be retrenched from the market. A safer alternative, meloxicam, has already been tested successfully and is available for use. 
Meloxicam, like diclofenac, is an effective pain reliever, widely used in the West. One of the hurdles in promoting and marketing this drug is that in comparison to diclofenac, meloxicam is more expensive. The battle to save the Earth's most effective scavenger has just begun. The number of these three species is so low that it will require scientific intervention to bring it back from the abyss. To help revive the crippled population and undo the devastation caused by this lethal drug, a conservation breeding program has been initiated. The Environment Ministry, in collaboration with BNHS and UK-based Royal Society for Protection of Birds, have set up vulture conservation breeding centers at Pinjor in Haryana, Baksa in West Bengal, and Rani in Assam. Four more breeding centers, each in Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, and Andhra Pradesh are also being set up in collaboration with the Central Zoo Authority. These centers hope to give nature a hand by helping create a viable population in a safe, healthy and free environment. We must not forget that one chemical intrusion by man has caused devastation beyond belief. It has wiped out nature's most resilient and powerful scavenger from the face of this planet. Vulture conservation programs are a viable solution, but a complete success is only possible if we eradicate the use of this drug. Unfortunately, in spite of all good intentions, diclofenac is still available today. Though some states have moved into action, the central government agencies, the Drug Controller General of India and the Animal Husbandry Department of the Ministry of Agriculture have still to react to the Prime Minister's directive. While they debate and ponder over the issue, the species may go beyond recovery. If we are really serious about conservation, this is the time to act. And the only way is a total ban on this lethal chemical. From over 85 million vultures 10 years ago, only a few thousand remain today. Some believe the number could be as low as three to four thousand. But nature is resilient. Given a chance, she will bounce back. It is time we all came together to help the master of the skies in their last fight for survival. It will be a matter of great shame for mankind if this unique powerful scavenger disappears as we stand by without lifting a finger to protect it. This film and the Vulture Puppet Show have been a powerful conservation campaign tool for the Vulture advocacy, generating tremendous national reaction and media attention. This triggered off and galvanized the policy makers in taking decision in favor of the vultures. 11th May 2006, the Drug Controller General of India issued a notification to all state drug controllers to withdraw the license for manufacture of the veterinary diclofenac within three months, that is by 11th August 2006. On 19th June 2006, 
discussions on the vulture agenda in the National Board of Wildlife, chaired by the Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh, further expedited the implementation on the ban of the veterinary diclofenac and increased production of the safe alternative drug, meloxicam. The government has been quick to respond to the vulture crisis. Now the solution lies in our hands. There's an urgent need for action by farmers, rural communities, herders, and especially the veterinary doctors of India to stop the use of diclofenac and to take up the alternative vulture-safe drug. Remember, your actions will give the vulture a fighting chance for survival and restore nature's crucial link in the food chain.